every day will go out. He did. He, he got a job three months after, but in that three months space, every day will go out to look for something to do. He walks into labor and he carried concrete. Hi guys. Hi guys. Hi guys. Hey guys. Hi guys. Hi guys. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Rachel Biogene Adesi. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If it's your first time of coming, thank you for coming. If it's not your first time of coming, thank you for always coming back. It means a lot to me that you come back to listen to me just talk. Yeah? Before we get right into it, can we just take like 30 seconds to just appreciate the fact that, man, yo, I drew my brows. As unprofessional as it looks, I drew it. E for what? Effort. And I'm wearing pink lipstick. A amen. Hey man, I'm such a beaut. <laughs> Today, we want to talk about one major thing, which is, should you marry a broke man? What does it mean when people say they don't want to marry a broke guy or they cannot marry a broke guy? First of all, we live in a culture where love has been so monetized. So it feels like uh, uh, um, um, if you don't have money, you cannot have love. And I see a lot of you doing, mm, of course, of course. <laughs> well, um, money is a currency that we need for anything we want to do, not just love. If you don't have money, you cannot even almost walk, walk outside. Like, just op just waking up and breathing. Five k have left your account, then going out and coming back. Like, <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? So, um, let's not make it sound like if you don't have money, you don't have. If you don't have money, it's going to be pretty much hard to do anything on this earth because money is the, um, the legal tender. But our generation today has so much monetized money and we hear it in our song. I was going to say we subtly hear it, but it's not even a subtle message anymore. It's a strong message. We let, hear songs like, if you love me, you go buy me Ferrari. We, we hear a lot of other songs that I can't remember off the top of my head right now. And truth is, over time, what these songs do to us and what these ideologies do to us is the fact that we put in our head that money and love must go together. So somehow, if it's not even showing you money, some people feel like, oh, he doesn't love me, he's not buying me gift, he's not... Which gifting is a is, is an expression of love, but it is not what really... It's not the major category of love, so we must, you know, be careful to put that out there first. Money does not totally define love. Money can be used to express love, but it's not the total definition of love. Another thing I want to put out there is the fact that the women try in that place of... I can't marry a bull guy, I can't. It already shows a perception that you expect a man to take care of your every need. So truth is, if you, it's, it's, and it's a two way thing, I'll explain the other part. If you had so much money, would you be saying I can't marry a bull guy? Can we put, can we, if you could take care of yourself, you could buy all the things you need to buy for yourself. Would you be saying I can't marry a bull guy? Would it, would it come into the picture? Hey guys, this is Editing Rachel. I realized that sometimes in trying to pass across a thought, I lose that line of thought and I never get to complete it. Well, during editing, it's usually a very big problem. So I decided to make up Editing Rachel where I just get to um, put short videos to complete a thought that I didn't complete when I was shooting so that we don't have a lot of half-half thought everywhere. I promise you will not be featured all the time, but I really want to be able to complete my thoughts and until I learned and, and until I can learn to do that well while shooting you guys will have to be stuck with editing with you so um the rest of the thought I was going to say that's the second part of what I said was I realized that with ladies who are financially buoyant or stable or who have um, some form of material things they're not usually very concerned with what he has or what a guy has as in possessions or as in job most time they are usually concerned about character, about who the person is, about if you go down this the remaining video, you realize we define who I think a broke guy is. And that's what they're usually more concerned about. But because they know that money, the idea of money and you know money for hand or money for bank, it's flaky. They can pump money into the right guy and they'll be okay. And they can pump money into the wrong guy and they'll be in trouble. So yeah, thank you there's been a huge misconception and actually mostly from the bible of how people say that um it's a man's duty to provide for the home a man who cannot provide is worse than infidel yada, yada, yada. we'll probably do a full video on that another time but god's plan is not that a woman should be financially useless god's plan for anyone is not to depend on another person do you understand so if you're saying that god's plan is for the woman to be um, depending on her husband. So what happens to the woman before she is married? And most times what this ha what most times what this causes in a lot of women is that it creates 
it creates a lot of dependency all through their life such that so before you got married so people are with their father depending on their father if their father can provide then when their father is not available or if their father has never been available somehow they have to look outside of them to a man so it makes women even feel incapable of taking care of themselves where a woman feels like oh for me to take care of myself i mean my needs a man has to be involved so there's already that thing that we need to debunk we need to debunk the fact you can take care of yourself now when you are married of course it's the man's job to lead and because it's a man's job to lead in the home he puts a responsibility on him scripturally to lead in everything including finances but does it mean that all of a sudden because you're now married you abdicate responsibilities for your life financially and otherwise there's a thing where you really want your partner to be financially stable now let's not mistake financial stability for what i'm talking about a lot of times when people say i don't want to marry a broke guy they're not looking out for the right things to look out for when you're trying to know whether someone is financially stable or whether someone can build wealth most times they're just looking out for what these people can afford right now or what they cannot afford right now so a lot of times when people are saying is he broke can he take care of me can he pay the bills they're looking at does he have a job or does he have a business that brings money does he have a good house does he have a car most times these are the things that young girls or younger ladies look out for but that's not that's not how you even know whether someone is broke or not so who is a broke guy a broke guy contrary to pop, popular opinion to me is not someone who does not have material things yeah because you can actually have material things and be broke and i would explain a broke guy to me is someone who at worst cannot afford his basic amenities that's the one that's when it comes to physical things but secondly a broke guy to me is someone who has no means to attain and sustain wealth because guess what you can have a job today okay get there a broke guy to me secondly is someone who has no means to attain amass and then sustain well so regardless of what they have going on for them now they have a good job right now they have um a, they, they have a good business that's bringing in good money they have a three bedroom duplex a five bedroom duplex but these people some people have these things coincidentally you happen to just have a good job do you understand so i ask people that say oh he has a good job they pay him well or he has a good business he has a car then I, I try to ask them what if he loses all of these things what if he loses his job and then cannot pay for the house, for the big house, and then cannot sustain his car and has to sell his car so you, can, you guys can even rent a smaller house? What happens? A lot of times people are going to say, God forbid, and it, it feels like I'm, I'm a prophet of doom. But that's just, it's a normal part of life. You can lose your job. In fact, you're losing your, your job might even be a pointer to something better God is calling you to. I didn't say God made you lose your job. Oh. I'm saying it can even be a pointer. One thing that we're promised as Christians is that all things work together for our good. And that thing that we're promised is trial and trials and tribulation we would have as long as we're on this earth. So our only hope is usually the fact that all things work together for, together for our good, regardless of what's happening. All things will, even if we lose a job. So what happens when this man loses his job and he has no way to build wealth and there's no nobody's giving him any job on, on the platter or he's not receiving any job? Like, so what happens in the in the two years that you guys are in that place of okay, there's no certainty of job? has it become less of your of a man of your dreams okay now let's leave misfortune leave misfortune aside let me paint a scenario for you a man that was earning five hundred thousand, and let's say as at 2017 2018 2017 2018 and then currently it's 2021 so he got, got married in 2017 was any five hundred thousand naira. he is um his rent maybe if he still doesn't worry like in a good place like three fifty thousand for like a two three bedroom flat or 400,000, he has a car that, you know, a good car or a, an average, he has an average car. And he's living, he seems to be living, living a good life as, you know, a young bachelor. That was 2017. 2018, he still has that job, he's still earning 500k because how often do they really increase the salary? Like, how often? So he's still earning that, but now he has a wife. So that 500k now, if we go by the fact that, oh, he's taking care of everything, he's taking care of two people now. Okay, maybe they don't feel it that much. They're still cruising and it's three bedroom for only two of them. So they are enjoying life. 2018, um, they have their first child. Now, uh, they, they are now three, which actually they are five because children, all they do is taking. They're just zooping your money in. Like, do you know how much Sherry Lack is? Or do you know how much? If you want to give a child a good life, <laughs> God, <laughs> guys, it's money. So all of a sudden, the same 500k that was taking care of him is not taking care of three people, which were saying that the child is plus two. So let's say five people. But they can still manage. They're still wrapping it up. Then 2019, 
or let's say 2020 zoom 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 second child comes which is times two again they're now seven okay they're technically four but we're putting that the two children are two two people each but they're now four on that same salary so i'm saying he has that good job because a lot of time people and this is how you know people that can make wealth so he still has that same job he has he still is a graduate the only thing he has a certification is graduate of, of electrical engineering that's all after seven years of univ of 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 finishing school and there are young graduates every day coming out they don't just they did not come out with electrical engineering certificates they came out with one it certificate they've done hsc they've done all those many many courses but your, your husband is on the same plane trying to look for a job with his electrical engineering certificate on that same field so he's still earning 500k he has not been raised or let's even say they, they, they gave him a raise but you are now four on that money bear in mind that the conversion rate of a dollar in 2017 and conversion rate of a dollar now it is is it's, the change is drastically different a dollar now is 530 so it's 500k or maybe even 600 700k that if he was lucky to get an increase in in salary it's still the same thing as it was earning now because one the dollar exchange rate has gone way up two because he has more mouths to feed so at the end of the day it looks like ah, your life is going down something is wrong nothing is wrong spiritually what just happened is hey this man was in a place where he was earning good money but he did not know how to amass wealth or let's even say you, you got married into a rich home what this means is that you are the women caprices of your extended family caprices is that correct women and caprices women and caprices okay <laughs> Anyway, the start. So you you have to the, the day your father you know, does not feel like giving you guys money, you guys are in trouble. The day your 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 husband's uncle feels like you guys are not being loyal enough, you are in trouble. So when everything is shot on you now, and then show push comes to show, you you guys don't know how to move because your your husband that you married based on he can take care of me because he just oh what he did was had a good job he cannot make money. So at the end of the day, what you entered into the marriage for, you have fooled yourself. So don't forget I said in the first place, you should not even go into a marriage looking for who can take care of you. That is out there. Please get that loud and clear. But because we have to choose spouses that are financially stable and can build wealth, because wealth is built. You don't walk into it. You're not a damn wealth. Wealth is built. So because we want to marry those kind of spouses, you, you are even choosing wrongly. All in the name of looking for someone that is not broke. You found someone that just had, you know, immediate gratification. Can take care of you now. Can buy you phone now. Can show a gift on you now. But you didn't think of the future. You didn't think this man can 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 build. Now, how do you name a man that can build wealth that can start from scratch? Because sometimes we, at, in fact, at different levels in our lives, we're starting from scratch, different levels. And I might be here, and someone else might. For example, J Bombs was someone on Instagram. He was saying that husband lost a, his job one time. Like that. husband is a pilot, and I think for a year or two or a year, I'm not sure, he was out of jobs, and they had to cut down their lifestyle. When she explained what it meant for them to cut down their lifestyle, I'm like, hey God. Even a cut down lifestyle for me right now is luxury. Like I cut down, I think they have to use only one car. I don't have a car. We don't have a car. So I'm saying that at each point, starting over, we just say at each level we are, we will get to a place where we want to start over. Where we are, you know, it's like climbing a mountain. When you climb one mountain, you're at the top of the mountain. To get to the next mountain top, you have to come down from this mountain first. Then start climbing. So while Rachel might be at the first mountain, at the valley of the first mountain, trying to climb you might be at the valley of the second mountain yeah though you are climbing a, a, another mountain a second mountain you are still at the valley do you understand so at different level we have to get to that place and if we cannot build from scratch it's going to be hard so that thing that we call financial stability will not even be there again so really a broke man is one that cannot build a broke man is one that cannot save a broke man is one that cannot get his hands dirty when need be like okay when i was thinking of getting married I did not even consider finances for some strange reason. I think one for the fact that I knew this person was hard working. I knew a bit about him, like a bit. Secondly, I'm, all, I'm also hard working now. All of us will go work. Do you understand? I knew I was not a lazy person. I knew I, I'm not a lazy person. So together we will be okay. I remember when I was talking to my pastor about some of the reservations I had. It never finances was not even a problem for me. I was not even thinking about it. Well, maybe because I already knew that this person was one that was financially was a good financial steward, was a good steward and was hardworking and was wise and all of that. Maybe because I knew, but it was never even a consideration. And you know, when we started dating, every other time I see how this person, um, how he made financial decisions, I knew like it was it strengthened my conviction to marry him. 
Do you understand? So people will say, how do you know someone that can build? How do you know someone that you know has good financial? You will see how they make decisions about money. For example, when we are dating, my husband didn't have the current job he has right now. He was working um, partially somewhere else and was working at a um, community pharmacy. Then he got this job. The community pharmacy pays like way, 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 way lower than this job that he was doing, yeah? So, but this job requires him to travel. So he traveled for the job the first time. And when he came back, I think he came back during the week, he just, you know, visited his parents, did caught up with all the things he had to, you know, catch up with after not being in town for like a month. And then on Monday morning, he went back to that community pharmacy to resume work. It was, it was a learning moment for me because it told me that this man will not let pride keep him from getting his hands dirty. You know, even for me, I don't think I would have gone back to the, that kind of job immediately. So it was not in a place of, ah, levels don't change you, I don't work that kind of, it's a lie. Baba went back to work on Monday morning, early, closed by 5, left the office. It, for me, that was a, a strong conviction moment for me because I'm like, hmm, great, good guy, good guy. Even me, I don't, my, my financial stability not strong with that one. Do you understand what I'm saying? When we got married, I think sometime last month, we started to talk, talk, talk. And he told me how he, he once did label job. Label job is people that carry concrete, like laborers that work in building sites. I said, what? You did, you did what? Like, I was in shock because we never, you didn't tell me before. And like, I mean, the conversation never just got there. I'm not embarrassed at all, actually. I'm not even made me realize that I didn't make a mistake. So I'm like, why did you do the label job? So he had finished university, he had graduated, but he had to go for um, internship. He had put out applications that, oh, he just graduated from university and stuff, but a job was not coming. And he couldn't stay at home and nothing was around. So every day we'll go out. He did, he, he got a job three months after, but in that three months space, every day we'll go out to look for something to do. He walks into labor and he carried concrete. That's why you're back home. Like, he carried um what's called smell he told me he told me of how he, he didn't carry as much as other people carry sometimes his own fail they reduce his money by the end of the day he knew that he had money to take home that was major for me that tells me that see we cannot suffer in this life not just because i'm ready i'm ready to put my hands on, on on the plow but because of him also i know people that are 40 in their 40s in their 30s that they don't believe in hard work all they want to do is ponzi scheme all they want to do is is um, bring one bring two bring one bring two you know those rubbish kind of things that you don't know where you are going to some of them are waiting for you know shell and chevron jobs so anything that comes lower than that they cannot take a 50k job because i mean they are graduate this kind of people for example when you hit a brick wall in life financially it'll be hard to do anything with them because their mindset is even in a in a on the ground they're they broke on their mindset so those kind of people they have a an entitlement mentality they have a broke mentality because they don't know what it is to build wealth they, they, they don't know see why right now i know that we cannot go back to that place of you know um, um um when when we say get our hands dirty label job is not what it will do again we, because in every stage in life you have your list and when you get you can never go back there so, somewhat so why we can't do you can't do label or i can't go and send akara anymore because we have built ourselves to a level where that cannot be our lowest anymore i'm um, just to clarify doing a laborer's job doesn't have to be your own way of hustling like i said that can even right now that will not be our worst case scenario anymore because we now have better and different skill set when he graduated he didn't have any skill set apart from the fact that oh he just um, he was a graduate of pharmacy so that's even one of the reasons why people should um, do more than come out with just their BS certifications from school. Have other certifications, have other skills. It could even be a skill, it might not be um it might not be a certification. So um how much knowledge or how much skill set you have, yes, how much skill set you have would most times de determine what your lowest point will be. Do you get me? Alright, so please don't I'm not saying you must be able to carry concrete and stuff. Why we can't do that? We both know that if worse comes to worse, I believe all this English I'm speaking and we'll go and hustle. He would go and hustle. It's, it's a knowing. We don't have to talk. We just know that this man has my back. This woman has my back. So do we have all the things that we have? We we would like to have now. No. Can we ex can we afford all the ex? We wanted to go to Kenya or Tanzania or something, one East African country for our honeymoon, but we couldn't afford it. We we chilled. And we're learning to cut our coats according to our material. But guess what? We know that we are going to blow. Like, you know this, we have money in this life. Money. 
But it's okay, we're ready to book build. We don't have all the things that we need now. So I can't sit down and say, oh, my husband is going to buy me. My husband can do this. My man, we might not be able to afford all of that now. Do you understand? But I know that I did not marry a broke guy. And that's what I see younger people that walk away from young men. How can you be 20? How can a man be 27 asking you out? If you finish school at 25 and at 27, you are there ex- ex- expecting him to buy you, buy you boom, boom straight. You're a wicked person. Even if you have a better job and you can afford it, but you can say this man is building. Right now, all he has is a 100k salary or even a 50k salary. But you can see he's hardworking. You can see that he's putting progress. He has progressive pattern. If you've not seen that video where I say don't marry potential, I'm not saying you can see that he has potential. Potential is nonsense. I will link the video somewhere. I'm saying you can see that he has progressive pattern. He's putting one plus one every day, becomes two. He can do this today. Today, he rented a one bedroom, like a one room apartment. Tomorrow, he has bought a table. Next, like you can see that he's accumulating. He can accumulate wealth. You can see that. I think you should give him a chance. Don't don't let don't let old school do you and you'll not be looking at the men that in their 30s. Those guys have had 10 years of work. They've had time to put in the work. It's different when a 40-year-old is asking you out and then you're looking at his life and you're like, what have you been doing all your life? And you can see that right now he's never even trying. Like, let's let's not, I'm not even say that maybe he made a bad decision and he went. No, you can see that nothing is coming out. That's different. That's you have to now, you know, be more careful. But this one, you can just see that this guy is a, is a, is young, he's hot, he's putting his mind into it. But this few points of mine, I hope that I've really, I've really been able to convi- um, confuse you. <laughs> okay, just before, you know, scripture says that um, the labor of a fool wearies all around him because he does not know the way to the city. That's what happens when you marry a man that you think is not broke currently because he has some money to spare. But he has no financial plan for the future. He cannot build well. He cannot. You guys will be going round, 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 round. You'll be frustrated, guys. So I hope with this few points of mine, I've really been able to um, talk to your heart. And this video might not even be for you. It might be for someone that you'll be willing to talk to. You can send them the video, and you know that oh, this is what this person should be listening now. Don't be quick to judge people and call them broke just because they don't have money now engage them i'm not saying potential i beg you go and watch that video of potential not potential i'm talking about i'm saying this person have progressive pattern you can see that they're they are actively doing something about their life give them a chance two of you can be earning 100k each that's 200k is coming to the home every day and you can start off from there young people that's why you are young the glory of the youth is in their strength Go out and walk together. Stop sitting down, cross your leg, and waiting for like when I'll come and you know take you up, sweep you off your feet. But, but please, 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 I beg, I beg, I beg. Thank you guys for coming. This, this, there are a lot of things coming to my head to say, but we have to end the video now. Um, I think we should do a live video about this topic. What do you think? I like to hear what you think. We're still on the mission, one thousand subscribers by this September, and hey i believe that we can do it please subscribe if you are not tell your friends about us and uh, like this video yeah i like to also hear from me in the comment section and who do you think a broke guy is uh what's your take about it and um guys i'm actually tired of talking (laughs) 